What? Uh, hello, uh -huh. everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Canadians with Disabilities. My fingers, That's my nice. fingers slept. My fingers slept. <laughs> my name, <laughs> my name, is Brent Freight. I'm the host for the show, and and uh, you know, finger slips here and there. <laughs> but uh, I want to thanks everyone for tuning in today. Uh, you know, please check out Neil Matheson's YouTube channel if you're already watching live. While well, you're already here, and. Uh, if you are listening on a podcast, on your favorite podcast, on Spotify, uh, you can do a Google search uh, for PWD Allies and you'll find me there. There's lots of ways to find the podcast for sure. And today I have uh, Ellen uh, Davies joining me. Well, I got my camera stuff out, out here too, so we can uh, yeah, we can uh, do the camera camera thing. Because both my cameras are right-handed, I can't double guard. See, so, yeah, I'll I'll show you my. I'll start with my bag. This is my bag. It's got a camera and two lenses in it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty impressive, eh? It's like, look how small it is. <laughs> Mind Mine's you, one of the one of the lenses is super small. The uh, Canon just announced that they uh, discontinued the M series. Yeah, well, that's this is the camera I have. I have I have the uh, the M six. Yeah. Mark mark ii that's this one with with the with the uh 22 millimeter which is equivalent to a 35 so you can see yeah. how see how yeah, small that is uh, right cannons are a 1.5 crop not a 1.4 crop like nikon it's a 1.6 actually 1.6 yeah but it's a it was, uh, super super small camera the the hump on here but you can take it off if you want but it's it's pretty neat kind of rainfinder. It, now it's considered a mirrorless, right? It's a mirrorless, yeah, yeah. And uh, just out of uh, it's, it's just kind of is. like is, it is. Which which lens is, is that? Is it your is that your twenty four or seventy or what is that? It one? is. Good guess. Here's here's my equivalent twenty four to seventy. This is my equivalent lens, twenty four to seventy. That's with it. with the lens hood. Oh, look how a, small uh, look how small it is. That's the lens hood on the fifty. <laughs> yeah, and it's internal. It's, it's internal on this one. The only one that uh, is external zoom is my twenty four to seventy. My seventy yeah. two hundred is an internal zoom. So, okay. unless you know what you're dialing in, you won't notice zooming out. With the twenty four to seventy, I think the lens lock is on. No, not it is. Oh, it's not. Okay, so that's at seventy, and that's twenty four. Mm -hmm. oh. My my first really serious camera that I ever got was uh, one of the Canon Rebels. Right. But it was it was still a crop, and that was you know that was a mirrored camera, and it was pretty pretty big. But you can see like something like this. The reason I like it is that it's so small, and particularly yeah. when I was uh, having to you know walk with, with crutches and stuff, I could just take this bag, strap it onto my belt, and yeah. and right away I've got two lenses and a camera in in one bag. So that's why I like it, right? I haven't tried video on my mirrorless yet. I know that the AF on my DA50 is complete crap for video. Mm. It just doesn't. It hunts and hunts and hunts. Yeah. The mirrorless camera is great because it, uh, what you see is what you get. So your metering is always in real time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I can literally sit at the market square across the street and go, okay. If I go, if I go one over two hundred, oh, that's too dark for today. I can change my aperture, my depth of field, right on the fly. Mm -hmm. So I, I tend to, uh, though I can, I've got a leather harness. I can, um, I can double gun both cameras, but it's leather and steel, so. Man, it just digs in under the backpack. Like I could just feel it going into the armpit, going ow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. And if I wear two straps, I got, I've got a strap that screws on the bottom, 
uh, that swings to my side, but with both cameras on on straps across from each other, it's very they get all kind of like bunched up, and it's like yeah, so just, tense, just a second. He's back. Uh, I just, I'll be oh, back. Um, oh, I'm just, okay. I'm just on hold, and they okay. said they'll be back with me in five minutes, and they're going to get this thing rectified. And I said I'm actually doing a podcast right now, so okay. um, yeah, I just want to give uh, uh, Ellen and yourself and everyone listening. Um, sorry about that. Um, I should have muted you sooner. I it's, I, it's I didn't, okay. I didn't, makes, I didn't think about that. It makes it an entertaining show. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, we're I, we're talking cameras right now. See, it's oh, shot. I, 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 I got the. <laughs> This lovely music in the background. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Yeah. So if I were, if I were the harness, oh, yeah, you, you can, uh, you can mute me for now. I'll be okay. back. Now. I'll just, okay. I'll, I'll show on the screen. I'll go skull, like when I'm back. Okay. So when I wear the strap, the the money maker that is strap, which is a harness, kind of like. Mm. You ever see the detectives and they're wearing the harness? Yeah. That was yeah. kind of like that. Or, hold on, we're not on camera. Essentially, I can remember how the hell it goes on. Come on, cooperate this right? So I already kind of, I think it's kind of twisted, but the idea is each camera goes on these and then it, they kind of hang and the bottom has the the mount, the tripod mount that would screw on the bottom. So they mm -hmm. kind of hang like two, like a gunslinger. But the problem is that with a backpack over top, this thing just digs right in. Yeah. So after about an hour and a half, you're like, get the shit off me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, you know, having crutches too, like my, my arms are full already with crutches. Yeah. And so I can't really have a lot of equipment to impede me. Right. So yeah. about the only thing I can carry is something like this. So that's <laughs> why going small is so much uh, better for me i have a very light um i had a very light tripod but i lost the rubber feet on the bottom so what i did was i ordered um the, i don't know if you saw them advertise those plates that screw into things like like into a, a wooden board or a rock mm -hmm. a plate, i think they call play pal or something right but they come with a bunch of plates and you can buy accessories. One of the things they gave me was this tiny little uh, ball head. And the thread on my monopod is the smaller one than the regular standard tripod. Oh. So um, I wasn't using it for a while and I had a nut adapter to make the, the thread bigger. So mm -hmm. I could go into the bottom of the camera straight out. But it was chewing up the, the adapter thread. Mm -hmm. So the heck with this, I had to strip it off and start using this monopod. So now I just remove the plate, screw it to the bottom of the lens if I'm going to use a big lens, and then it'll the feet will come out. And That's cool. It's just it's a monopod. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want the camera standing on it by its own. It would just fall over. But I've got. Let's kind of, see. Do I have it here? I've got one of these. This is this is this is my tripod. Have you seen one of these? It's a mini, yeah, mini tripod. There, it's what is it? Uh, what's the bomb? Uh, yeah, it's called a Manfrotto. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. You can just uh, put it on the desk. Super small. Yeah, 
I have a, a big tripod. It's a Vanguard carbon oh, fiber. Oh, okay. Um, but it, it's really, it's a beast. Even as a carbon fiber tripod, it's yeah. really, but it stands about eight feet in, in full height. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, the other one I have is a camera I buy. It's Henry's camera, its own brand. Yeah. And a lot of the rubber feet on the spikes. So I'm going to replace it with um, a very small, compact tripod that doesn't have spikes. Mm -hmm. And what I need to take a tripod where I'm going to be on soil or grass, I'll mm -hmm. just, I'll see the heck with the little rubber feet and I'll just take it. Well, those, with, there's those uh, flexible ones too. What are they? Those uh, gorilla yeah, flexible those, ones. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to trust my gear. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, the monopod's handy because if I'm going into a crowd, I can literally attach it to the monopod, and it's it's standing right between my legs, so I could mm -hmm. theory film a live concert, and I wouldn't be like. If there was a big crowd around the stage, I wouldn't be like, sorry about my big tripod, buddy. You know, like, yeah. it's not. Anything. You know what's cool about this lens is this is one of the lenses that uh, they didn't come up with a very, very many lenses on with the uh, M mount. But this is one of the uh, image stabilized lenses. So it's got image stabilization, 20, 24 to 70 equivalent in that size lens with, <laughs> with the... Uh, with the hood included, right? So it's pretty, you're, pretty, you're pretty impressive. My the thread on my twenty four to seventy is an eighty two millimeter thread. Okay, and that's not a cheap filter to replace. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my I bought a Tiffin kit, which gave me a UV, a CPL, and a a haze filter, which is you know, like a warming color filter. Which I don't use. Um, you know what I you know what I find though is that if you if you buy uh, a hood and it doesn't have it doesn't have to be the it doesn't have to be the official Canon hoods or the official yeah. Nikon hoods because they charge a, a fortune. But if you if you buy any kind of comp compatible hood, that's almost as good as uh, getting like a, a filter over top because you're still protecting the lens quite a bit. You know, against well, the, any kind of bumps or it. knocks. I don't think I don't even have a filter on here because I was using uh, I was using uh, a variable ND on it, and mm -hmm. it was a pain in the ass to screw onto the UV. And I can attach the the CP. I can attach. Generally, I'll do is I'll put the CPL on. And then I'll put the ND filter over that so I can really dial in my... So if I want to do a really long exposure, I can really dial in my with my ND and I can just turn the mm. CPL a little bit. And then I can... I can and that's what's the, really cool about, uh, about the live exposure stuff now, right? There's like what you yeah. see... In the light, in the viewfinder now is actually what you're going to get on on exposure, and it's so cool, you know. Like yeah. I remember one time I I was at uh, I was at a beach, and it was really really badly backlit. But then I had um like the sun was in in the back with my son in the for, in the foreground, and it was mm -hmm. a, a really cool look, and so I I I took a shot, and it, it turned out perfectly because. Uh, because I knew what the I could see that what the exposure was going to be like. And was, do you see the Do you see the bar down uh, down the side there? I don't know, my eyes got to get up. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's my mm -hmm. meter exposure in real right. time. So, mm -hmm. and this camera, if I'm shooting vertical, I want to get an L bracket from my for both cameras. Yeah. So I don't have to worry because. When I put my camera in portrait mode on my tripod, uh -huh. the sucker just starts diving on me. Yeah. Right? Like, so <laughs> I want to get an L bracket so I can just screw that in, slide it into, it's an Arca Swiss, so I can just slide it into the into the um, existing tripod sleeve instead uh -huh. of using the mount. But it'll, it'll allow me to shoot for a portrait without the lens starting to, because if I does your 
does your camera have a leveler on it? Mine's got a leveler. Yeah. What happens handy. Is when the camera's, when the plate is turned to its side, so the camera's mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. she'll just start doing this to me. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go to sleep now. <laughs> well, especially the 70 to 200. It just yeah, it's heavy, right? Dives. Yeah. Crazy. Front heavy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't, uh, I haven't used my old older F mount lenses on on my mirrorless camera, but I have an adapter, the F to Z adapter, mm -hmm. so it converts the my old F mount lenses to use on the mirrorless system. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of see it. I didn't know if you uh... that's the F to Z adapter. This little black. Thing. You're so. just on your phone right now, right? Not on a not on a no, laptop I'm on or my anything. iPad. I'm on my Are iPad. you? Yeah, because yeah. I what I I didn't know if you wanted to do a screen share and we could uh, you could show some of your photography if you wanted to. I could turn the screen over to you if you want um, to try that. I do have a lot of a lot of photos on my iPad. Um, okay, I've got I've got some that I can show the audience, but I I. I didn't know if I should wait for Brent to do that. I haven't, I haven't figured out screen sharing on my end. I do have photos on here, but I don't know if the al they're in the right albums. Like, I mean, it's really weird. It's annoying. I actually upgraded my mm -hmm. Adobe Cloud. To I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna unmute Brent now. Hold on one second. Uh... Oh. One pink unicorn. There, there you go. I had a whole bunch <laughs> of unicorns running around everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Brent. I should have muted you. I didn't realize. Um, oh, that, yeah. So yeah, I know. I I could have should have I could have muted myself. Also, I should yeah. have done that. And I apologize to yeah. you today uh, yeah. on that. It was a technical issue, but uh, don't worry, uh, folks. Uh, yeah, first of all, appointment we got is next next Thursday. This 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 episode seems to be full of technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have to wait a week. Yay! I gotta wait. Yay! Later. Nothing. Nothing later today. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, what I was uh, what I was gonna do, Brent, is I was gonna screen share. Like we have been just geeking out on on equipment. Yeah. I was uh, showing everybody my, this is my 24 to 70, nice small lens, nice. image stabilized lens. So it's a nice, nice small gear, but I was going to screen share so I could show a, a few of my uh, photogra photographs that, that I like. So I'm going to, I'm going to try that now. So let's, uh, let's go here. And this is my Flickr screen. Does everybody see my screen now? Is it full screen? Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, so here's my, uh, my wife, one of my wife and, uh, let's see, I'll go, go back and you can see almost all of these are, are poor, like I'm, I'm a big portrait nut, right? This, this one, for example, um, you see behind him, it looks like granite behind him and all <laughs> it was, all it, I would, I took this picture with a, um, it was a 150 millimeter equivalent lens. And so it was a, just a very small, uh, just a very small cement pillar behind his head, but it looks like oh. a whole wall behind his head, right? Cause it's yeah. all, it's a compressed, it's a compressed image um, yeah. because, because of the long focal length. And so oh. that one little pillar looks like a huge granite wall behind his head. So yeah. that kind of gives you a, a depth of field would do that too. Uh, yeah, exactly. If you go f two eight or or f one point eight, depending on what the lens is, yeah, it's and, and, at the field is. and another great example of this, I I took some wedding pictures uh, for a friend of mine, and here she is with her uh, oh. with her husband, and this was just outside the church, and the, I'm not kidding you, the patch of grass was literally, basically as much as they were standing on, that was the the patch of grass was like this. And, oh, wow. the and the tree that you see behind behind them was just a small little tiny tiny tree. It was oh. it, it was nothing. It was just like uh, it was like a Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> it oh, had wow. it had That's nothing huge. on it, but because it was a because it's a one fifty millimeter lens again, it it compressed the whole background, so it looks like a huge forest. 
and all yeah. it was was a stupid little tree and it's it's compressed and it looks like a, they're standing in a forest almost right yeah yeah it looks like a whole but greener literally, literally this the patch of grass was like this it was just tiny 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 in a parking lot with a tiny little tree and it looks like you took it in a in a park right almost like a big forest yeah so that's it's just kind of cool the things you can pull off and uh here's my favorite uh photo length uh photo uh here's here's the 35 millimeter equivalent i love well oh. i love this equivalent it it gives you a nice enough of the background yeah. and uh, it doesn't distort it doesn't distort which is nice uh um, oh, here's and i don't uh a lot of my lenses won't fit my backpacks. Ideally, I want to get a rolling backpack suitcase style case. I can, if I need to carry extra gear, I can, I can put stuff in the smaller bag on my back and then roll the bigger stuff on a on a on, on like a regular suitcase. Except that it's made for cameras. Yeah, and see what you, uh, you... they call them. Uh, they call them airport. Uh, airport camera bags but they're um you can wear them as a backpack some of them or 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 roll them behind you um like a suitcase and mm -hmm. uh those are beautiful cool. papers yeah the, it, it's it's really neat like i really like playing with uh like these ones like this like, like you're really playing with shadow a lot like there's just yeah basically there was just the one light that was lighting your face so you get that you know the harsh light on on one side and here's another one. Uh, I can go back. Same kind of deal. Uh, where's where's I oh, see this sort of the same thing. You got one side of her face is lit, and the other is. So it's yeah. kind of you know just the idea that you can play That'd with light, nice right? Black -white. That'd be yeah. Nice black -white, actually. Yeah, but I I just uh, really like. Uh, and uh, here here's one. Yeah. Yeah. Who's yeah. that? Yeah, who's that? <laughs> good lighting control. I have yeah. a hard and here's yeah. here's an here's like a really good uh, black and white because you can really see how her, her eyes are really popping yeah. there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah and her eyes really yet, pop. This this lens was considered uh, a very coveted lens by Nikon in the film day and the early era of the digital era and it's a made in japan it's a d series they're on their g series and then the z series lenses but this was uh this is a nikon uh 85 1.4 and i don't know if you can see it neil yeah i can see it it's it's a very coveted lens it's an interesting lens because you set it the lens to s16 but then you control it uh, by the camera, that's cool. So you to lock it in to uh, at f sixteen, but you can still. Uh, like a, a picture of me again there. That's all. <laughs> oh, oh, there. Yeah, yeah, she's like, oh. <laughs> you can see. Uh, I did. There was a couple of years that I did uh, the Miss Wheelchair Canada. So oh, there's okay. there's a few women in wheelchairs, and I I was the lead photographer oh. for, and this one was cool. Uh, and you can see I I totally blew the uh, if the if I had this in uh, color, you can see that I had the somehow I think I hit my finger and I ended up getting the ISO like way overblown because I oh, you yeah. know I I made a mistake with my finger and it was that it was the the ISO was way too high. But even so, I was able to convert to black and white. And you can see all I did was I basically was standing right over top of her and, and you know, I went up as high as I could and, and did this with the camera. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking right down at her and you really have to be comfortable or at least the, your subject has to be comfortable with you kind of being right over top of them, right? And yeah. you kind of have to warn them, okay, I'm going to be right over the top of you and take a picture. But it turned out really cool. Just, well, this just, one here is um, a dedicated. This is a dedicated. Uh, like that nice picture. Two point f point f two point eight macro lens with a one to one uh, ratio. I'm not sure what the distance on it is. 
Uh, it's a very small filter, but it's a VR lens and it's an N series lens. And um, I just happened to hit the lucky sweet spot where someone was selling it because they were switching systems. And uh, it is it's a fabulous lens because it will it will literally lock down to uh, f two point eight or f three, um, and it is uh, for mac it is strictly for macro photography. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. Ha <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all uh, the iPhones technology all the iPhones with the uh, with their macro ability now have nothing on this lens because you can you can set this camera and this lens in manual mode and just dial it right in. Um, you know what I wanted to talk about here, Brent and and yep. Alan is um, the reason why I like photography so much and especially with um, with. Uh, portrait photography and maybe Ellen you'll you'll identify with what I'm about to say like when I look at a picture I can look at a picture and I remember the moment that I took the picture like I actually remember setting up the picture I remember myself behind the pic behind the camera I yeah. remember setting I yeah. remember the moment of taking the and all the lead up of taking the picture I remember my moment as a photographer taking the picture mm -hmm. um and like more so than I do, like if I'm say the the subject of, of a photo, like if somebody's taking a, a picture of me, I don't remember it. But but as a photographer, me setting up a picture, and I, I remember the moment of setting up a picture and taking it, and mm -hmm. and that that to me I love that 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 I can look at a picture that I, I can I can re I can remember everything like the lead up to that picture. I can remember everything about it. And I've stopped at this picture uh, because it's actually a little bit sad. This uh, this girl here, um, she actually passed away when she was 15, I think, uh, because uh, she got into a bad crowd, yeah. and um, and she got attacked uh, at a sky train, and uh, later later died, passed away, oh. and um, this was quite a few years ago now. But this is one of the one of the last photos. I mean, it was the last photo that I ever took of her, and it was probably one of the last photos that that she ever took of her herself too. And uh, you know, so here here's here's a, a moment in time when I totally rem remember taking that picture, and mm -hmm. now she's even she's no no longer here. But um, I mean, you can see there's light in her eyes there, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, you think of the life that was in her eyes at the and she, like I said, she's only fifteen, and she might have been a little bit younger than maybe. Uh, I think she was fifteen, um, but yeah, it's it's just really sad when you when you can see the light in somebody's eyes there, mm -hmm. and and know that they're know that they're gone, but the, you know the, the the moment is captured though. It's kind of yes. cool. The moment I, have, I can't seem to get my friend Jordan in front of my camera. I've tried it. She's got such a pretty face. She's half native and half Dutch. <laughs> and, uh, she's got the whole goth rocker look. And I, when I first met her in 05, um, she's the only person I can know that would that could rock a granny shawl and make it look cool. And she used to have like this, uh, her hair really short, like a, like a bob, like a fifty oh, yeah. bob, sixty bob. But she'd wear like those little berets and stuff. And she's a bigger girl, and I can't think of a lot of women in their early twenties that could really pull that off. But she had that little personality mm -hmm. about her, where she just stopped a room cold. Yeah. <laughs> And no, she just walk in wearing moccasins and 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 a and this little granny shawl, and everybody would just stop. And and you, you know that's yeah. the that's the thing I love about photography is is because I mean and I, I don't know if I shared this before on on the podcast either, but uh, you know like when I was younger I had, uh, you know like two of my favorite movies of all time. Besides, it's a wonderful life. If I had to pick one movie, it would be "It's a Wonderful Life." I just love that movie. Um, and mm -hmm. but besides that, 
my my two other favorite movies that I grew up with as a kid was one the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope, and mm-hmm. then the, and then the first um, the first uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The you know that uh, Indiana what do Jones. You mention, uh, those uh, those two movies, <laughs> and and with those two movies, I had like I always had visions of myself being a, a director. Like I always wanted to be this famous movie director. And that's what's kind of nice about being a photographer is that you yeah. get to boss people around and say, stand this way, um, you know, uh, pose like this, and you get them to move over so they get the light proper and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you, and just to get you get them perfectly posed and you freeze the moment. And like I said, like I can look go through all those pictures and rem- remember exactly how I took that picture. I don't remember anything else about that moment, maybe, except me behind the yeah. camera and I, I know exactly that moment in time of me behind the camera and taking that picture well, time is still, right? Woods has much longer now I think she's still got black hair I haven't seen her in years um, but I actually want to get her a wide brim black fedora and get her sort of switch into that whole uh, kind of Stevie Nicks vibe oh yeah you know what I mean the, the wide brim cool. fedora but I think I'm like she's she's starting to warm up to the whole idea of wearing Doc Martens in her late thirties. So, oh yeah, you know she's a mom. What what I like about uh, photography too is like when I when I do the uh, breaking with Brent segments, uh, yeah, it's or traveling the traveling segment too. It's yeah, having the camera in front and then kind of showing people where I'm traveling to, like the. The, the the motion of, of going forward and, and all the scenery that's around it's just yeah. uh, capturing the the moment in time uh, and uh, some of the still photos are pretty cool too. Yeah, no, I I was, you, we I, you've I, done I, some great I, ones and I, I've I've had so much fun editing them down. Like oh, yeah. I I still remember like one of my favorite ones is uh, with that snowfall and you did in the and they have the guy guy in front going whoa 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 you know slipping on the ice and and then we. <laughs> And then you had one where you did uh, the, really, the Christmas uh, light display. It was really cool. Yeah. yeah. The camera really lends itself to a lot of flexibility, especially I mentioned with a gimbal kit. Is mm-hmm. that uh, the, the lights can pop out like this. So if you're looking down at it, but yeah. it will also flip like this if you're looking up at it. Oh. Or oh, yeah. if you've got it on an angle, it'll come out and it will... Uh, It'll pivot that way so you can shoot portrait in the same and do the same thing where so you could almost be uh, looking up at it. But that's one of the reasons I want to get the uh, the red for it. But it could oh. be. I mean, the the images that come out of this have fifty megabytes per second. Of yeah. Raw wow. Oh, it, it's, wow. It's a forty five megapixel thing, and if you remember back to the film day. Uh, I imagine your ISO starts at about a hundred, hmm. right? Yeah, so I, yeah. Um, this or remember starts, the Polaroid cameras. Remember those? Yeah. This one starts. This native is sixty-four up to twelve hundred thousand five hundred. Wow! Ooh, yeah. Native, and then it's got yeah. two. It's got two uh, low, which are lower than sixty-four, and it's got two that are higher. Mm-hmm. But um, you started to get into the noise factor when you get past the 12,500. Yeah. I generally, I can shoot this thing at 800 and still blow to a 16 by 20 without batting an eye. Well, and and like I said, even if you convert uh, a lot of color uh, photographs, you can convert to black and white and it removes the color channel. So it removes some of the noise. When you remove the color channel, it removes the noise a little bit. Lightroom has pretty neat. So I much, like that. Lightroom now has a denoise AI uh, mm-hmm. filter. I have, it's not available. It's still grayed out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still in beta. Um, yeah. But generally, I haven't. I haven't. I've pushed the camera, and I still haven't gotten any noise in any of my images. Hmm. The other one, the, the one I use now is uh, DxO uh, Photo Labs. Yeah, and that, that's really nice software. Uh, really nice Snap software. Speed, Snap Speed is a nice one because that's a free one, right? That's a free one. Yeah, it's free, yeah. but it, yeah. uh, 
it's really handy. Um, I don't use it as much as I used to because I use uh, Lightroom and Photo Express Mobile, mm-hmm. and I can um, I I have Nikon um, SnapBridge, which um, allows me to uh, send over my images uh, in JPEG, mm-hmm. and oh. uh, the iPad has. I bet you got to switch it back, and I really wish like. Adobe would set it up so you can have two cameras on the mm. app at the same time and just, you know, sort when you want to use that. Right now, my D850 is on my phone and mm. my Z8, which is my mirrorless, is on my iPad, which is a kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, so I actually want to take both off and replace them because the, the Z8 can actually trans handle transferring um to the ipad um oh yeah at, at full original file size but jpeg but it's yeah. still um it's high resolution high efficiency jpeg so it's at its finest um and then i've got to get a card reader with the memory card for it because mm. my my card reader won't read the uh, oh. CF- I wanted um, to get I wanted to get back to uh, the point uh, like to me like I, like I said for, for me the biggest the hey, biggest hey. thing about the biggest thing about uh, photography for me is like I said capturing a moment in time capturing if I know that I've captured the essence of a person like it doesn't like it's not about capturing uh the perfect smile or or that everything has to be perfect it's like, did, did I capture the essence of a person with that shot? And yeah. I mean, and I can, I can, I'm, I'm so picky, right? I can take like maybe 10 shots and I'll throw away like nine and only keep one because that's how I'll, I am. I'll, I'll, I'll say like oh, that, that fact, one picture, I, yeah, that one picture I know that I've, I've captured the essence of that person really well. And I'll, you know, but I'm really picky, right? And that, that's, that's how I am when I'm when I'm doing the um, the traveling or breaking with friends segments. Like uh, there'll be a bunch of photos that'll be like snap, 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 snap. Yeah. And when, when I was walking along the ferry, running the platform, there was a bunch of um, shoots that were done. And I was like, mm. no, I didn't like that one. And I like so I say to Sonia, like, say she's recording behind me. I say, no, let's redo that one. Oh, I go no because it was like either there was I didn't worry about too many people that were walking by. It was just the the um this this type of scenery that I want to get the angle the um, angle right yeah it was like and I looked okay oh, too far over that way and I didn't mm-hmm. want to make it like a perfectionist on it but it was just the, that moment in time um and when yeah. I did the the traveling segment same thing uh there was a couple of shoots that this, I uh, this camera, I, uh on my D850 it's set on the dial uh but like analog dial. But on my uh, Z8, I just push a button on the side and I can set single uh, timer, continuous low, which is like 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 shooting a semi-automatic machine gun one at a time. <laughs> Fire it, yeah. or that yeah. continuous high, and yeah. that's kind of what that's kind of what the phones have tried to mimic is yeah. burst. Yeah. So um, when I'm shooting like. Like sometimes I'll go downtown and I'll look for that old guy just sitting by himself on a bench, but mm-hmm. or walking by, and I'll just set the camera on continuous high. And then what I don't like, I'll just kill. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Even, I wouldn't mm-hmm. even for it to the cam off the camera. Um, yeah, that, well, and that's kind of that's kind of what I, what I look at too. I I look at just the natural, like this the natural shot of rather than saying okay, well pose here, stand this way. Yeah down that way because i want to get that shot i just look at it and go hey that was natural and that's how i i do the the shoots on it um because it's, it's almost like scripted you know what i mean like yeah and just so I you're both a a, really just black oh, and white. Sorry. i want to get a really good black and white of my friend jordan i just have to wait till we you know and then i've got to black and white that. school yeah i gotta do a, a more because i just want a headshot of her mm-hmm. and i just want to catch her at a moment where she kind of lost in thought yeah. Because her face expression is just so yeah. interesting. She just has yeah. these, and then she'll catch you looking at her, and she'll do this sort of "I'm up to no good" look. <laughs> kind of look the, like the Cheshire, the Cheshire cat, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. she just give you that 
Clint. <laughs> and I just got a, I have, because when I was living in Toronto, that's when I started getting my camera gear. Mm -hmm. I started with a D200 that was used by a photographer, which was a crop sensor professional camera. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a consumer base and then then I went mirrorless to the full, I went full frame on the D850. So I've never, Jordan and I have always lived like an hour, two hours apart from each other over the last seven, eight years. So this is, a, when she comes up to Kingston, this will be the first time I hang out with her um, in like eight years, but we were inseparable when we both lived in Niagara, but I didn't have the camera gear to do a really kick-ass headshot, so I'm kind of hoping that I could just catch her off guard and just wait for that <laughs> perk. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, that's a shot. If I get it yeah. right, I could blow it up pretty nice. Well, I, I remember um, we were talking, I think it was the very first time you came on uh, when we, re re we relaunched yeah. on, on YouTube, and one of the first uh, questions I asked you was uh do you uh how does your photography tie into your advocacy because i want you to know that that on the thumbnail today i put i put on the thumbnail today i put advocacy and the photography and mm -hmm. and uh, i know we're just basically talking about photography a lot but yeah, i want I, I wanted to really harp on that point of i mean there's a reason why i'm talking a lot about capturing the essence of things because you know mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of life that happens <laughs> that gets overlooked. And I guess that, that's what I wanted to, to zone in on uh, today is we're talking about photography, but we want to, we want to talk about capturing life and an essence and, and, and the essence of a, of a person and people and how people matter and how it's so easy for, like I said, that one, you know, the one girl at 15, she's, she's gone through no fault of her own. She was, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, that it wasn't, it wasn't her doing that. She's, she's gone. It was, uh, it was somebody else that took, took her life from her. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just wish, uh, you know, we have, we have governments now that are, that are uh, giving us made and things like that as, as a solution um you know to poverty and mm -hmm. i just want to get back to the looking at photographs and realizing when you see a photograph when you see a, a photograph of a, of a person with yeah. light in their eyes with glint in their yeah. eyes and you're capturing that moment i mean that's important right you're capturing oh, life absolutely. you're capturing a moment and you know i hope that when people watch this back they won't just be watching back our conversation about photography but they'll be watching back all those faces that I took and yeah. those the glints in the eye and you 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 see life in the eye and you know the, Lip, a, about yeah. that one the one girl her life is gone but, you, know, you know who who that life is behind that picture it's all about the lived experience on that person and what what that captures the that image of in time the moment in time of that person who's behind that person like who that person is of uh because we we really don't always know like what does that person go through in their life or what were what was the moment in time of of that capture of that photo uh were they happy or were they what kind of or like what were they going through at, at that moment of time in their life and and only as, as a photographer like you would know mm -hmm. of, of that time but people looking at that photo they'll say oh okay you yeah. know somebody look at my photo and say oh okay um yeah, really. But but, but see, like I I mean, like again, like even with your photo, like yeah. I I remember exactly, like again, I remember yeah. as a photographer, I remember exactly how I set it up, where how where I told you to to stand and ev everything yep. and and getting the light right and the whole bit. Like I remember, yep. I remember everything about setting up that shot. Mm -hmm. um, and I can go, I can go through all my shots, and I can remember exactly how it was when I set up that shot and press the show shutter button i remember and i think it's i think that, that, that that's as a photographer that's kind of a blessing to realize that you know you're capturing you're capturing a moment you're capturing a life 
who that and, person and, is. And life is important and you're capturing the essence of a person and the essence of every person on this earth is important and shouldn't be overlooked. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter your, your ableness. It doesn't matter yeah. anything. Everything is irrelevant. It's what's, yeah. ir what's relevant is that we're all human beings. We all matter. And uh, yeah, I don't know yeah. what, what else to say, but th that's yeah. why, that's what I wanted to focus on today was, you know, starting with the photography, but realizing, you know, the, the beauty of photography is capturing that moment in time and, and you're capturing that person and you know that every person matters and the whole you know whatever kind of uh whatever kind everybody of everybody counts and nobody counts yeah 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 i don't know absolutely and it, that's like it's so important <laughs> to, to look at, at the at the image of the person who they are and not uh Say okay, well, they're just just a person A. No, that person has a lived experience story behind that photo, behind who they are. Um, we really capture the the essence of of who that person is by the photography of the the angle of it as a, as a natural shot, not just as a you know kind of like a scripted shot, like you know like and like it's like the, that moment of just kind of like looking of like, yeah, if you if you stand in this one way, it really gives that that, that glow of that person. And who is behind it? It's um, I, I love it. Like I love photography. I'm not as good as both of you are. And 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 everybody has everybody has a light to sh to shine, right? Yes. I mean, every, there's that there's that uh, saying that you know the eyes are the windows to the soul. And yes. I, like I I firmly believe that. So everybody's everybody's got a light to shine, and you can see that in photography. Like totally, as a photo photographer, I can see yeah. that light in somebody's eyes all the time, and yeah when you see that light, you realize that that's, ever, you know, that's life and life is important and we shouldn't take it for granted, you know? Yeah, and I, I guess that's my mic drop moment, you know, and, and we're almost yeah. uh, out of time here, but I just wanted yeah. to kind of end on that note for myself. Yeah. So we ending comments on that. Um, I'm going to go over to Ellen and uh, we can, uh, you know, recapture a few moments um, like even tomorrow on our round on our round table, I, know, I call it roundhouse roundtable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we'll be punching each other. Roundhouse, <laughs> roundhouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, episode number six coming tomorrow. But uh, over to you, Alan. How how do I uh, wrap up my advocacy in, in in the way I do the photography? Well, I guess the uh, the project. Um, I, I still need a couple more months to get my feet grounded in Kingston. I haven't met everybody. And, um, I have a lot of work to do when it comes to the another nobody Mean Streets project because that's going to take more than one photographer to do. I just, and this, even if I got a big grant, I literally don't think. Maybe if I was in my 20s, I could do it, but to go city to city to city mm. And, mm. and photograph and get the story of each person. Um, for the book, would it's more than one person could do. Yeah, and um, this is where it'd be cool I, if, if wanna, really it'd be cool if I could it. beam myself over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we could both really, do it. <laughs> it's really about um, it's about this one is the last. The first one was really about strictly. It was a project that came together by Luke, where it was unhoused people in general. Um, it was back, done back by on a film camera, but this one um, is supposed to also have a documentary component, but it's on how it was disabled people across Canada. Mm -hmm. It's probably something that really should be tapped into what Jeff, Jeff Leggett's doing, mm -hmm. um, but it would be a project where I would have to just be one of 10 photographers involved with it because yeah. you need, need the photographer, but you also need someone who's tapped into the community as well mm -hmm. as someone that can do the interviewing. Because I can't, do, I could, for me to do Ottawa, Toronto, Hamilton, it would take me 10 years to do that 
that yeah. book proves yeah. that just being and, and that kind of and that kind of jumps into uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's why we're looking at getting a trying to get a sponsor for for the show here. And once we do, that's where we can tap into your your uh your uh, interest, your very, uh, uh, your advocacy and in, in your interest in photography, Alan, we could actually integrate and in having both Neil and you uh, taking photos of uh, on, on the road, right? We can now mm-hmm. say, Alan, we're taking you on the road with us and you can do some uh, photos. We can I, could, I, could, I, could take, I could take a bus trip out to, uh, out to Toronto. Yeah. And then we can both be uh, wielding wheel- our cameras. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm a little apprehensive because I really don't know where I, I have a general framework of what I want Main Streets and other nobody to be, but I don't mm-hmm. have the specifics. And that, the one mistake I made with the first book was it was just like throw everything in the kitchen sink at it but really quickly. And mm-hmm. there were there are a lot of missed opportunities. The book wasn't polished. It was basically what they call a chat book, mm-hmm. um, which means it was very grassroots. And mm-hmm. the book designed to be um, book was designed to be uh, printed and given to people who are unhoused to sell to make revenue for themselves. Mm-hmm. And we didn't get enough copies made to do it. Uh, the idea was to shop it around, but I knew that um, the quality, it was so grainy. It was just basically each home, unhoused person mm. whose home uh, was was a photo of them and a poem that someone in the poetry group had written. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and then they were kind of put together in this book called Nobody. And we tried to shop it out west, but um, the quality just wasn't unfortunate there because mm. the mm. photos were taken by someone who was kind of a fly-by-night dude. He wasn't a, a bad mm. photographer, but it was mm. filmed. It was shot. A lot of the photos were overblown, mm-hmm. overexposed or underexposed. So by the time they were put on into a desktop, publishing program and and resized and everything because I just I was handed like 13 four I think it was like maybe 15 photos of people oh. and there was no documentation of who they were yeah what yeah. city they lived in oh. and I, I was just given these eight by tens and and we, we looked at what we could do and we kind of we, we ran a poetry event at a place called the club in Niagara, and we sort of pinned the photos up around the around the uh, around the bar around the mm-hmm. event, and mm-hmm. that was an opening night of it. But I would definitely like to do do high end quality where it, the paint the photos are on photo paper, mm-hmm. yeah. the covers done properly. Mm-hmm. Um, the story. I don't care. Stories find each other. I don't care if some lady who's in a wheelchair and her name is Sally and she wants to call herself Joni. Yeah, or Jane Doe. Yeah. Whatever. Or she can call herself Kelly. I don't. Yeah. Part doesn't matter to me. Yeah, to protect their identity if they if they wish. Yeah. Wants to use their street name. I yeah. Don't, I don't care. What I want to capture is people that are living in tent cities. Stories. The rim wheelchairs, they don't have an apartment of their own. They're couch surfing. Right. Or yeah. they're living in I shelters. Agree. And um, you can see that they've got, that they're in either a wheelchair or they're using a walker or somehow, mm-hmm. or they've got some kind of disability. And the story is almost as important as the photo. Yeah, because yeah. it it matches, and then the documentary could be a bit more expensive, expansive, uh, where it can be uh, an hour long, and it may not have everybody in the book, but it can have. Well, you know, I, I had I had two comments, uh, and they're a bit different. One comment I was going to make was, uh, you know, you kind of re- 
you, you expressed some regret that you wished uh, the book could have uh, turned out a bit better. But in some ways, like I've kind of experienced that because I, I put out a book too, right? Of course, my my dad, Daddy Bentley's book. And there, there's always going to be like at some point you got to put, put the book out. I mean, I, I could have, in my case, I could have held on to that book and kept holding on to it and holding on to it and holding on to it and say, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. And not put it out at all. Mm -hmm. But at some point you don't got to say it's done. I got to put it out yep. there. Um, well, all I, you know, all I want is a, um, a more, it, the book doesn't have to have everything in it. Like I would like to have a, a list, a page or two of resources from each town. Mm -hmm. um, who banks, kitch, soup kitchens and stuff, resources that go crisis numbers. And that doesn't really doesn't necessarily have to be in the book, but I'd like to have 25 people. Um, hmm. That means 25 photographers and journalists and yeah. so forth. Right. Yeah. Um, and some stories would be more compelling and some stories would be less compelling but um well one one thing i do i do agree with you on too is my it's, second... a grant. It, it's definitely a you need a grant and mm -hmm. uh that grant's got to cover the book cost yeah the, um someone to make the book someone that's got really good um desktop publishing skills and has done has done the book style before mm -hmm. Someone mm -hmm. that can do the layout because I don't have the software. No. What yeah. can I afford the software? Because that means uh, that means it, it, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe um, Photoshop, and Adobe InDesign or Publisher. Adobe or yeah. 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 A Da Vinci yeah. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. sounds, so, sounds interesting. Well, where yeah. I do where I do agree with you too, Ellen, is. Uh, you know, when it comes to the photography part, I think, I think a problem with the today's crowd, of course, is everybody thinks they're a photographer because everybody's got a, a camera on their phones nowadays, right? And yes. I mean, I've seen them. I've seen the mom. It, I've it, seen the professional cam photographers that have used their phone to take a picture just because they happen to be out. No, um, that I mean, that's fine. But but what I was going to say is my my big beef with that is. Is you, you see a lot of people that post pictures on say uh, Facebook and they'll have the 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 picture posted they'll put it upside down or sideways or something it's yeah. not even or, yeah. it's not even oriented right or they'll have like uh -huh. red eye you know they'll have the uh -huh. devil eye in them and they don't even try try to fix the red eye or or anything like that and yeah. those type of things or it's blurry you know and it's like are you seriously gonna are you seriously gonna uh, yeah like that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I've seen pictures like that posted, and yeah. it's like, why are you doing oh, that? Why, why or, or sideways, or a blurry picture where you can't even see anything. It's like, why are you posting that? It's a blurry picture. Take it down. Well, <laughs> you know? I, even with my professional camera or my iPhone, I've got to take <laughs> pictures and just like I'll go through them and I'll be like, I'm just not feeling it, and I won't even there take I, into, I won't even take them into Photoshop editor and and clean them up because I'm I'm just not picking up on the vibe of those of those shots. I'm like, it's not even that clear or they're not. I'm just I'm looking at them and I'm going you see what what I'm getting driving at is I can look at a photo and automatically know, hey, that is a b I've seen it as a black and white before I even push the button. Yeah, I've done that I too. Get, I've done that I, too. But I get photos where I just I'm not feeling it, and they just get deleted, mm -hmm. whether they're on my phone mm -hmm. or camera. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I, I, oh, I, I even just buildings. Like I took a photo of uh, Kingston Penitentiary, and it yeah. might have been just the angle or or the side of the street I was on, or the color mm -hmm. of the sky, and I just I was like I looked at the photo; it was sharp, it was in focus. But I just had no feeling about it one way or the other. You know, you know, they say that the human eye is uh, the human eye is basically an equivalent to a, like a fifty millimeter lens. Forty eight. Yeah. yeah. Well, like for me, 
I think my eye is like more of like a, it's more of like the 35 millimeter. Like I, I see wider than I think, because whenever I look at something, I'm always, I always like my eyes like widen up. I like, I, I see a bigger, yeah, a bigger than I should be. A bigger outlook. Yeah. Cameron, Cameron 50 millimeter. They actually have a 45 millimeter and apparently 45 is closer to the human eye than 50. Yeah. Hmm. It's somewhere between yeah forty and forty five somewhere in there, the human eye. Um, yeah. I actually, uh, I sold my um, forty five. Oh, what's that? What's Whoa, that? that's the third oh. <laughs> of your place. <laughs> no, 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 that's a nice good shot. That was up the castle. Oh, was... okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, that was freaky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh. These two lenses are very close to each other, um, but they're also very different. So there's your nifty fifty. Mm -hmm. It's a true, it's a true f one, but it's a true full frame fifty. But it's an eight, it's a one eight auto auto focus lens. Yeah, this one is a nineteen seventy two seventy six. I'm not sure what the Urana is actually, it's, but it's made in Japan. Mm -hmm. It's still oh, got wow. a serial number etched on it, but it's a 514 manual. And you nice. can still see the original uh, piece of metal yeah. that, that Nikon used to use on their old film lenses. So this is a bit of a bugger to get onto my uh, DA50, but it is a gorgeous lens. There's no fungus. No hazing, yeah. but it's fully mm -hmm. manual. And I sold my 45 1 8 Tamron lens. I love, that. I love that one. There's just the, the lights on this car, it's just the way yeah. that the camera picked it up, and it just glares right in. It's like so, so bright. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. it's just like, wow. <laughs> I've yeah. actually, I'm going to try some lens trails, but. Um, all the highways are so far out. Um, I haven't quite figured out the busy because Kingston can get really dead quiet. <laughs> it's the unicorn. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find a spot where I can do light trails, and mm -hmm. uh, with the buses only running to midnight or eleven o'clock, um, right? Really hard to get out to. Uh, to a spot to do the lake trails and um i'm going to quickly share my screen again just so i can go back quickly before sure. we before we go because yeah, i wanted so to quickly show um uh, you, we talk about leading lines all the time like this is uh here's an example of leading leading lines where it's got the this is down at the crescent beach oh so yeah you've got oh, the, yeah. you've got the line of the uh you know um what do they you call it? A, a, a breaker. Pardon? Is it with a with a um, with a is it barrels or something or post? Yeah, it's 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 like a a break. It's to okay. um well, Nick, if, for the waves. If you're down there again or somewhere like that, um, if you want to try really interesting leaving lines, and you can do uh, if you've got a tripod or whatever, and you can do a long exposure. Is to actually get level with the wood and and the pylons or whatever they are. That's true. That's true. And, go that, in and then that, and then uh, do a long exposure. That would uh, be cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's uh, I've I've been messing around with that a little bit um, in Kingston, where yeah. uh, there's so many free tie-up spots for uh, boats. There's no power for them. They just it's free docking. And, oh. Wow. I'll go down and I'll shoot uh, so that you see all the um, all the tie all the spots that they get, the uh, cleats the the masonry cleats tied into the wharf. I don't know if you can see on this one. I took the picture right when there see the see there's a bird. <laughs> mm -hmm. I deliberately waited for the bird to get in the frame, and you see I, I froze the bird on right, right beside her there. Oh wow! Was a kind of, a kind of a cool one. I was kind of happy about that one, I'm, but I, uh, I I waited for the bird to get in the frame there. The uh, yeah. this camp, the Z eight 
mirrorless camera I have has um, person, subject, bird detection, auto car detection. Um, it's got a whole bunch of them. It's mm -hmm. got an airplane only to, uh, recognition. And it's got different uh, focus modes in in it. It would take me forever to go through. It would be easier if I was in person. But yeah. um, compared to the D850's autofocus, and the D850, the, the big tank of the camera, is no slouch. This thing's a workhorse. It, it, it'll nail a photo way better than that. <laughs> like sometimes I joke, like, my camera's going, is that the best you got? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice photo. I'm not even, see see I the color see yeah. the color of that one though. Like look yeah, how yeah. look how nice and pop the, the colors just pop on that, eh? Yeah. The 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 red hair. Yeah. I, lo just, I just love that one. I love that one. Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful thing about the mirrorless cameras is uh if they've got the eye detection and everything, um the because they've got computer systems in there and AI built into them mm. that as long as you're, as long as you're, uh, you're in focus, it'll pick up the eye every time. Yeah. Mm. So I'm really looking. Oh, there you go. Uh, That's your Roy, Roy Orperson look. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, crying uh, over uh, you. you. I'm crying, I'm crying about my glasses. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. The anyway, we should along. probably wrap up now. Yep. So, uh, since That's you're the good. host, you can do the closing All comments. Right. I am uh, gonna just want to thank. Uh, well, I want to thank Ellen for coming on today and talk about photography. This has been a blast. I I know I told people at the beginning. I go, oh, we're gonna talk about tiny homes. It's that this and that, and we threw it right off. It's it's all good because well that's, it's because it's because as your producer I didn't tell you what, what we're gonna do but but uh, right? but see but see surprise. Ellen Ellen and I knew that we were gonna talk about photography that's right but I didn't know and that's see that's a surprise <laughs> to me because but I you know I she I I she enjoyed it I actually enjoyed well, good. the uh you know this segment uh, about photography because it is so important to uh, to capture that moment of the picture of the whatever it is of the person or the scenery, because only the person who's taking that photo knows what, what they saw at that time, moment of time. Uh, is it the capturing the, the essence of the person who's behind that person? What's the lived experience? Yeah. Uh, but is it about homelessness? Is it about uh, maybe they don't have a fixed address? Um, what are, what's that person going through in their life? Are they having a good day, bad day? Uh, maybe they, they're celebrating whatever, a special moment in their life. Whatever it may be, photography is so, uh, I find it so fascinating. I, I love, still love taking photos um, with, with my, uh, when I'm on my journeys and stuff. And I, um, I too, um, I capture that moment in time because uh, you cherish those memories. And when I get a notification saying that my photo storage is getting full, I'm going, uh oh, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Everything on my phone gets sent over to Google. That's why I get yeah. a half terabyte. And then I get, That's then right, I get yeah. and then I get That's a notification right. saying on my on my phone is going to a cloud, but the other stuff's going to Google and going, uh oh, hang on. Now we got the stuff going to two areas. Mm -hmm. So I, I gotta kind of work on that, but keeping those memories in line. Do I get rid yeah. of some of those or what? So yeah, the no, nice. it, it for me it's fascinating that like it like I said before, is like I can pose for a thousand pictures. And yeah. not remember any any of them that I post for them. But as soon as I get behind the camera and take a picture, yeah. I remember everything. Absolutely. Isn't it, but isn't isn't that weird? But I mean, yeah. and it's just something that you know, not fully weird though, eh? because it's it's what you're seeing um, when you're taking yeah. that moment. Uh, and yeah. uh, it, it's sometimes so I end up, uh, carry my gear around and I never, I get frustrated with myself because I'm like, I didn't even pull the camera out. Just the fact that it was in my bag on my back, I was I felt ready, but I just wasn't feeling that day yeah. at all. Yeah, you are ready. You're saying let's let's roll. And and then there's some moments in time too where you you, you see a perfectly good picture and you're like, I don't have my camera, damn it! I don't have it. Well, that's oh. like oh, that moment. Yeah, just went I, I, nail I hate those head. moments too. I've had that, but uh, oh. yeah, yeah. It's, but yeah, uh, this was this was a fun one, and like I said. I, 
I mean, I just wanted this uh, episode to be about photography, but also just about taking yeah. the time to appreciate the the life the life yeah. that's being captured and how life matters and how you're capturing the essence of something and the essence of a person and how every essence of a person matters and and the whole and it is as cheesy as that sounds i don't care if it's as if it sounds cheesy but to me that matters right and i just oh, wish yeah. that it would matter more to the powers that be in government that you know that life matters for everybody that that moments in time matter that essences matter you know, all that, all that is, like I said, no matter, I don't care if it sounds cheesy, but to me that matters, right? It, it does. I, it really, really matters a, a hell of a lot. And I, I echo that all the time. I, I, I see people sitting at a, at a bus stop and uh, a bus awning over there. And I see them all the time. And I, I stop you know, every so often and I say, you know, so what's going on today? Like, and just enjoying that, that looking at, seeing uh them looking around at the scenery around them right of like what are, what are you seeing today what you know and like I'll, I'll take a photo of a picture like uh, like something else and i'll show it to them and then they'll like they'll, they'll kind of look at me and they'll say well, what are you doing i'll say oh it was just a perfect shot of the sun coming up from an angle and then they'll say wow so they said can you take a photo of me so yeah mm -hmm. like so they'll stand there and i'll take well, that, a photo that's happened to me. i'm certainly been uh taking a photo and just minding my own business. And I've had people come up to me, would you take a photo of this? It, yeah. Sure. Because it's important. Not to set up to, because yeah. they can cherish yeah. those those memories of, of well, that, that person took a photo of me at that, that time and it meant mm -hmm. a lot in their life. And they can look back and they'll say, they'll remember what they were doing at that time when that photo was taken. Um, and hearing lived experience stories of what people are going through and looking at their photo and remembering what that person was going through at the time when they were talking to you uh, or maybe the stance of how they were angled or whatever it may be. Uh, and you're, you're right, Neil, um, before I end, we end the segment, I, you know, I, I really echo the, what you mentioned about the politicians really need to really gear down and like, listen uh, to, you know, lived experience stories, uh, listen to people I'm giving a lot of, I'm giving across a lot the country. Of because it, you know it's not all about the politics, right? It's all about policy, and it's on who is in government and who wants to change that 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 ancient policy, which it has to be done. I know mm -hmm. they're kicking and screaming, going, "How yeah. dare these people tell us how to do our jobs?" Yeah. <laughs> right now, friend, family, I, 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 I'm kind of giving uh, Canada the stink guy, especially the uh, NDP right now. What they did to Sarah Jarma. In Hamilton, I'm uh, so mad about that right now. I have no, I'm still processing that. I feel like she was thrown under the bus because of her belief system, the and, and she was tapped probably because she's got a disability, so they're not using that card. Um, the whole silence thing that the, the both her own party and Doug basically threw under the bus. Just yeah, yeah. I saw that, and uh, wow. Um, even in BC, um, I heard about that yesterday. Uh, I was at a at our our BC legislature, and uh, her name was uh, circulating around at the BC legislature yesterday. From a few people. Well, everybody's mad at the Ontario NDP right now because they think Sarah got a raw deal and she got silenced because she was an advocate. And mm, yeah. the whole she was a team leader and team player and the whole bet stinks. Mm. Yeah, but, it's unfortunate, right? Uh, that um, it has to, it had to end that way. Um, but I, I, just, I tell people to, to continue advocating to stand up for what they believe is right. Uh, and uh, and some people, unfortunately, they like to shut them down. They, people the higher up want to shut them down. Well, no, like you, you have to keep pushing forward. So, um, you know, for several I'm, I'm, frustrated keep pushing that, forward. I'm frustrated with all three levels of government. I really thought that Andrew Horvath or someone would have come to, because I read the articles and the posts that Sarah made, even with her redaction. Um, I was like, she didn't really say anything wrong. All she did was speak out that. 
And yeah. said people were being attacked. And, yeah, yeah. She, and, that's what that's and, what she said. They were being attacked on 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 each angle. Like it's just and, like and, he's fire. Like it was just like, yeah. I mean, because I, I and you know, and follow I, a narrative. Not one NDP person in any of the levels have said, you know, what you did to her was a bum deal. Mm -hmm. and not one she of them ever just completely threw her under the bus. Yeah, I mean, she just wants peace, and I think she, I think I know, and I don't want to speak for her, but I think she, you know, she just wants probably like the majority of people. They just want peace and and harmony. They just want peace. Well, it's like, all over. It's all over every social media platform. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's sad, right? Because it's, um, I mean, sure, like the war is. I mean, on on either side, you know, it's like they'll throw the they'll at each other. It's kind of like politicians. They'll throw it back probably, and forth, but at the same time, at the end of the day, they want you know, it's yeah. How it hurt anyway. in the backyard. Mm -hmm. So shameful. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. on how it was handled, and I think it's just they come to knock I, her head. I, I, I honestly, Brent, I'm not surprised on how Doug Ford handled it because he is he's a bully, and he he's gone after Andrew Horvath for the same thing. Like the whole thing he said about. Hearing her talk is like nails on a chalkboard. So we we all know what Doug Ford's like. He's a bully and he's a pretty racist type person. Mm -hmm. And his his reaction and his actions are of no surprise to me. But for someone to not support their own party member, not one person, and just to kick her out is just. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I don't think, I mean, from my view, my, my opinion is, I, I don't think she didn't do anything wrong. I mean, reading through right. the, the original transcript of what she said, I mean, she said she will not apologize for, for what she said. And, and no, like, nobody should really have to apologize for what they say on advocacy. I mean, she, she basically wanted ceasefire. She wanted all the, the you know, I mean, on both sides, she wanted it yeah. just to end. And then, but she's being criticized saying, no, you and, need and, to be kicked out of caucus because you're speaking up. Like, how does terrible. She, what I don't understand is how does she make the NDB party feel like not a safe space? That I, just seems like a cop out. That I, to me. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder, hey, hey Neil, and uh, El, I wonder what they do all of a sudden. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm in there, and I get elected, and I say, you know, how, da how dare you treat the disabled people in your province like, like dirt? How dare you? You had lots of years to change things. How dare you not raise the rates? Hey, right, kick this guy out, get him out of caucus. What? Because I'm speaking <laughs> up. I'd be like, excuse yeah. me. I would. I'd say, excuse me. Oh, okay. Yeah. What would you do better? Yeah. I would. I'd say, what would you do better? <laughs> yeah. And then they'd be like, okay, we're gonna throw you in the same pen as Sarah. Why? Because I'm disabled. <gasps> oh, but I, yeah. remember, I remember years ago I I, we had a, we had um, the, the party the party president apparently in BC didn't like disabled people though. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think, yeah. That was well, good, right? We, we, we uh, know that board. Wait. Premier Ford thinks of people in general, not just women, but people who are disabled, which. He's homophobic and he's pretty right. uh, dogmatic, but so is his brother Rob Ford. So is his daughter. The way, the way, Alan. The way I, I look at it too is, an elected official is an elected official. If they're disabled, non-disabled, they're just the person. They're who they are. And if elected because oh, a party leader doesn't like a disabled person, and I'm not saying. Well, kind of like what you mentioned, and they're not playing that card of saying, well, they're dismissed her because she's got a disability. But even if, if it was, I mean, that's like discrimination of letting a person go because they have a disability. Um, yeah, and that's not right. Um, I know that uh, there's a lot of problems in the uh, in the system that across the country and in areas that they don't want disabled people to speak out uh, on uh, on issues. I, I think that's um, not right because uh, I've heard this uh, several times and in different I, over, over over decades and um, it's like silencing a person out. Yes, it'd be you know it's a different story is that if a person came across very obnoxious and um, they, beyond throwing mudslings, you know what I mean then okay. But if a person's advocating because they 
they care so much about uh, a certain topic and they're and they're not majorly stepping on toes a lot of it's orchestrated like theoretical stuff within legislatures like you watch your question period and this and that they all work together and and i mean so if a uh, person is uh, on another party and behind the scenes a lot of them work together a lot of them can work together well i just the, this is what, this, yeah and this is what i wanted to touch on too is like yeah. uh uh Behind the scenes, we're always trying to get guests. And one of the guests we're trying to get is we're trying to get uh, Sonia Fristinol back <laughs> on and um, and um, Adam too. Yeah. And, uh, but, because uh, they haven't been on the show since you relaunched it on, um, on uh, YouTube. But, uh, you know, it, I just think about that short time in space when, when the the BC Greens joined forces with with uh, the BC NDP, mm. and how good that was, you mm. know, to ha to have two parties actually working together, it was it was the confidence supply agreement or whatever it was called, and yeah. it it like to me that That's worked like, that oh, worked yeah. really well, and and I mean I'll give credit where credits due. I mean, I do I do think that. Um, John Horgan was one of the better um, premiers that that BC has had in in quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he, he was he was very good. So I mean, I'll give what? him I'll give him kudos and you know a handshake and the whole bit. He did do a good job. But where he lost marks for me is is how quickly he wanted to step off of the uh, off of the partnership and. And that was when I started to, that was when for me, the sheen kind of came off because here I thought, here I saw a man that was just trying to do a power play. You know, he, he was basically listening to his, his uh, people that were pulling strings behind the scenes and saying, you got to do this power play because it's the, it's the thing to do to win votes. So he was about winning votes rather than doing the right thing. You know, and that's where I I kind of lost. He kind of lost the sheen for me. You know, I I kind of lost a little bit. You know, but he's still a he's still a really good premier, like mm -hmm. one of the one of the best for sure. Yeah. But yeah. as soon I, as I, I, as soon as he stepped away from from that agreement with the BC Green, Greens, I was like, oh, really? You're gonna do that? It's like, you know, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I it, it didn't wash. It didn't wash well with me when he did that. Yeah. Uh, I think the Greens should recruit Sarah Harmer, Sarah Jarmer, and give her a really good uh, position in in the Green. Also, mm -hmm. have her have her go to Mike. Um, what's his name? Mike Schreiner. Right. Yeah. I, I think I think one of these parties, um, like the, either on the federal level or the Ontario level, of uh, of the Green Party should be welcoming Sarah on to and give her a voice with open arms. Like, yeah, like yeah, I think I, she could be a valuable um, part of that party because obviously the NDP have I don't know what they've done, but I was really disgusted by. Mm -hmm. That really uh, made me question whether I'm going to vote NDP this time. Or federal, yeah, yeah, yeah. On any level, like on any level. Oh wow! Oh geez, yeah. yeah. Like, well, really... you know, it doesn't really yeah. uh, it doesn't look too good though. I mean, tossing um, uh, <laughs> an advocate like like Sarah like uh, Sarah um, out uh, out of the caucus. Uh, it. Um, especially, like I say, out, out here. I mean, uh, I hear ripple effects, and uh, even people in the community around here. They said, "Did you hear about that lady?" Some of them didn't even know what her name, but they remember hearing about. It. I said, "Who? Like what?" And I'm like, uh, and they mentioned her name. Like, yes, and you know, I, I don't even know. Like, it was like for me, what to comment on it because I was like, "Well, yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty sad. I mean, how it needed to be there." Like, it didn't need to be that way, sir. And I'm like, oh, oh okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, what do you say to people? Uh, like, I because I, I bump into I bump into a couple of people that I I uh, see on a regular basis uh, in the neighborhood here, and we get talking about what's going on. In Ontario happens in BC. What happens in BC happens in Ontario based on a lot of policies. Mm -hmm. And when they heard about that, they said they were disgusted. Like, 
they, you know, they said, who, who do I vote for? I, they, they said, I don't want to vote for, uh, for the, uh, the federal liberals. I don't want to vote for, uh, for the conservatives. Oh God, no. They said, don't want to vote for NDP. I don't want to vote for Greens. I don't want to vote for the bloc. I go, well, I don't know what to tell you. I, I said, yeah, but that's federal. What about BC? Well, hopefully they don't uh, play that in BC. I go, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm just here. So, um, yeah, have a good day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but hearing people's lived experience stories, like, I mean, that's just their view on what, what they see. I didn't ask them, like, I mean, do you have a disability or do you want to talk about like aspects of your life? I mean, some people do, some people don't, but that just goes to show that people are in a, in a mode where certain, um, uh, life events, uh, whatever it may be that, can have a huge impact on their decision making, all because of like uh, you know what's going on in uh, Ontario and their legislature. Um, I know uh, Matthew Green. Um, he lashed out. He was, he's pretty mm-hmm. upset right now. Uh, what's going on with his uh, within his own caucus? Um, I saw a, a post about that uh, just recently. I, I'm sure Ellen, you might have to look seen that, that up. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure what her. What his position? He's uh, well, he he's, was away for a while, but he was catching up on it, and he's obviously not too, not uh, not not too uh, happy. I mean, but what at the same time, it puts a lot of the members within the caucus, uh, in a in an awkward position, right? Because they they don't feel comfortable hearing what they're going through. But what do they say? Do they have to toe toe the party line? And because if they speak up on say how they feel, guess what happens to them? You know, and and I, and we should wrap, be wrapping up, but it's just just maybe wanted to finish up with this too. Like we we often talk about the hive mind or the or the 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 Borg collective mind of Twitter. You know, yes. that, that hive mind of Twitter, where where everybody, you know, they they say they have their own opinion, but really they're re- just reflecting the hive mind or the or the collective Borg mind of Twitter. And you know, I. So that's that's the toxicity of Twitter. I don't like uh, where people are re- reporting back and and dishing dirt on on other things, you know, and not really thinking and you know not really speaking for themselves, but speaking for the hive mind or the or the Borg collective, as uh, you know, Patrick, <laughs> you know, our yeah. friend Patrick would would identify yeah. with yeah. as a, as a Borg. Star Trek fan, or you know, um, but yeah, that that's. The, the, that's a bunch of BS. There's there should be no hive me- mind mentality. There should be no uh, Borg collective. You know, resist, resistance is futile. Like if you're yeah. uh, if you're an elective re- official, you should be able to think for yourself, and and stand on your own two feet and say, I yeah. think this. Yeah. You know, I, I you know I I'm not gonna like toe the party line all the time. I'm gonna stand up and think for myself because this is what right. I think. And just, just you know, have the courage to be your own person and not have yeah. a hive mind about it, you know, like because the hive yeah. mind stuff is just bullshit, you know. Yeah. And yeah, that's that, that's what I don't like about Twitter now is you have all these like groups that are hive mind is like, oh, we have to get together and hive mind and like don't think of your don't think of yourself anymore anymore. Like it's all about the collective, all about the uh, like a, a sim- sim- simulation, like resistance is futile crap, and it's like. No, mm-hmm. like I, I want to stay away from that stuff, you know? Yeah, you know, people, you know, should be able to speak up and say how they feel and then rather than being shut down and, and uh, like when it comes to like certain government officials, I know, like I know some that would love to say more. I bumped into uh, a couple yesterday, actually, well, more than a couple, but a couple that I directly talked to um, at the legislature. And I know, I know I can just read, you know what I mean? And I'm not going to say any names. I can read, I can literally read um, their, not really their mind, but their body language. You can tell that they want, there's more that they want to say, they can't mm-hmm. say, but yeah. you read between the lines. And I've learned over a year. And they should be able to say it. You yeah, know? I know, but they're not allowed to because the yeah. party won't allow them to. And if they speak their mind, they're, they're gone, right? Uh, well, I, and and and, well, and there's there's an example of uh, Shane Simpson, Simpson again, right? Same thing. Yeah. Uh, where he was pressured, like, and I we don't know exactly what what the piece of legislation was or whatever, but yeah, but we know it was bad. Yeah, and he he was pressured into saying, or or he, you know, they said we want you to do this, like release some sort of uh, revised legislation about something that was going to be punitive, 
and he, and he basically said, "No, nope, I'm not going to do it." Yeah, and, they, he, and the words and that he, he used was, <laughs> "Yeah," and and he he fell on his sword, and he walked away. You know, and, and I give him like full marks, and I I wish. I wish way more MLAs and way more MPs would do that. Like, if you don't like what's what is what's happening, fall on your sword and walk away, or or say this is BS and stand up and stay in your spot and and you know show like you know like this is bullshit, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't just don't just roll over and take it and be a hive mind, you know, because because ev- everybody can do that. Yeah, everybody, everybody can be a board. Uh, you know, I'd like to see some more be simulated. people. Like, yeah, I'd like to see people like Sarah pass it, cross over to the uh, Green Party. People that that aren't just going to uh, collect a paycheck at the end of the day and nod their heads. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see the Mike Maurices and the Benitas mm-hmm. uh, maybe move to a party that isn't sold out. Because that's how mm-hmm. I think he is. That they, they Very just, good. Great advocates. Those two are that's fantastic advocates for the disabled community across Canada. And both Mike, Mike Maurice uh, from the from the Green Party and Bonita Zarello from the uh, federal NDP. Uh, I mean, they're champions. When and some people say, well, how are they champions, Brent, when they're not pushing hard enough? Well, they actually are pushing hard. It's the problem is how hard can they push, right? They're, tra- they're getting that word out constantly. Their hands are tied because it comes to the federal government who says, what, what? Oh, well, yeah. we keep getting more, you know, a year and a half, two years. Uh, we all know that it's an election. It, 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 it's two voices. It's two voices fighting yeah. against the board collective, right? Yeah. I think yeah. we're, we're going to get uh, yeah. basic income before we but More get power to them. Yeah. Before we get DERB and before we get the Canadian Disability Benefit, right. I, I bet you that they're going to move the basic income framework faster. Yeah. You know, yep. it'll go, it might take a six I think months. so too. If everybody dots their eyes and, and, and goes gay for favor, that we'll see a Canadian federal basic income before we see a Canadian disability top up. Yep. I. Will, they I actually think so too. Add the, the disability top up to to the basic income and just be done with it. I've said right from the get go, why aren't they just adding the base the Canadian disability benefit that to the Canadian pen, disability pension plan and making it federal for everybody? Because right. all the time they wasted, I mean, like, wow. I, I, you know, Alan, I, I remember um, on the uh, former Twitter space uh, once upon a time when I had the show on there, I remember way back when they started, when, you know, when the whole discussion started about the, uh, the Canada Disability Benefit. I, I remember I was very skeptical and I had a couple of guests all that time. Why, why are you skeptical, Brett? Why? Because I have a feeling that there's going to be delayed. And I remember saying that. I have a feeling. I said, and I said, I hate saying this, people, but I think they're going to delay this. And guess what? You know, and I'm not saying that I'm, I'm the perfect advocate that's going to, hey, I speak for everybody. But I was always skeptical. I think I talked to Neil. I think I was saying to you, I think that one time, I, I don't know. Is this something about it? Is this yeah, something? Yeah, and I was, I was skeptical too, always. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We I, were skeptical I, about it. And I just, because I knew I the federal government's going to play you a federal up. Income um, that affect their lives so around t- between two two thousand and twenty. Me wrong, yeah. Before we get a Canadian disability, a dollar put to the Canadian disability. Group. Yeah, that, yeah. That's yeah. my prediction. They're going to put yeah. one penny in, one one for you. How many? How many are there? Is millions? Okay, I one guess, penny, one dollar, one penny pay. deposit. Government anyway, account. we should we should punch yeah. out. We've we've. Yeah. I like these long goodbyes, you know. Oh, they, yeah, I know they're all. We do it's, it's like this. Or it's, uh, like, or it's like goodbye, everyone, and then it's you know, like goodbye, everyone. It's, it's the classic. It's the classic movie, you know, where it's these long goodbyes. You know? Yeah, you're still here. Go. Yeah. Go home. Go. Yeah. yeah. That body uh, python at the end. What are you doing? Just go. <laughs> Just go. That's what? right. Yeah. Still here? You're still Get here. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in today. This has been a blast.
definitely, Alan. We're gonna we'll do this again another day. This has been a great uh, great segment. I really enjoyed the photography part, even though yeah. Brent had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. That's the great part. It's like throw throw the host off. What? Yeah. Hang on. And then, and then you, know, you know the funny part was of the segment. I go. I took the phone call. <laughs> I took the yeah. call right on air. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm wondering. We can talk about this after we get yeah. it off. But I, I'm wondering if I should pull the live and then re-edit it. Maybe but we can. We can talk yeah. about that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, but thanks everyone for tuning in today, and stay tuned to the uh, Roundhouse uh, segment tomorrow. That is Friday, October twenty-six. Okay. Until Bye, then. everyone.